<laughs> I've just been delivered. Brand new. Brand new. I think this is meant to be bonded in here or something. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely, all I'm going to do is just um, paint them black and put them back on. Yeah. Because they look fine. They're ready to go another just Put million. a bit of um, lubricant in there and grease and Another boom. million miles. Junk. One of the worst things on this car, truck, sorry, were the tires. So I don't even know how the hell we got this thing back, honestly, but um, it was just sheer, sheer luck. Um, I am not driving this thing another foot until we get some new tires on it. Uh, I've looked at some uh, tread patterns and some designs. I don't want these boring looking old truck tires and that. I want something. Uh, a bit decent with a good tread pattern and a little bit wider than this so we found some bf goodridge tires that uh will fit so now it's time to get these rims off and uh we're gonna try and get them in the back of that <laughs> that uh vf somehow we'll see how we go but um obviously it's a jewelry so there's two here two on that side i've got the two fronts there's six all up i've got a spare so uh we gotta get all seven in the back of the vf these things were hey god they were finished lucky to get that one out of that one alive and here's the tubes and the tubes were and the liners were just ruined as well on those so lucky we got some different rooms there and we can just have our normal uh setup tight squeeze but how awesome does this tread pattern look too that's cool. Much better than that normal standard truck style thing. This one will really grip up in the pits at places like if we have to ever go to Willowbank, they've got a dirt bloody back row of the pits and Heathcote definitely do too. So uh, need some grip like this just in case we get outside, uh, you know, park on the shoulder of a road somewhere, bitumen or whatever. No bitumen there and it's just all loose gravel or whatever. These things will give us the grip to get out of trouble. All right, time to get them back and get them on the truck. So this rear end actually was, um, didn't have any braking issues at all in this uh, truck, but uh, while it's apart, I, I want to take it for a road where you know, pretty much don't want any hassles, whatever. So I've got a new drum, uh, I've got new brake components, which are on the ground over there. Uh, and to change this was pretty easy. This is uh, what's called a floating axle setup. So you undo all these bolts and the whole axle just comes straight out. After that, you can take, uh, there's a whole series of, of bearings in here. Um, you undo uh, one nut, a retaining nut, undo another one that retains the bearing, and uh, this pulls off, and then you can pull uh, the, the drum off as well. So once that's all done, um, you can replace this. Uh, drum brakes are like a hornet's nest of springs and et cetera, et cetera, and if you're not careful, they'll, they'll take your eyeball out. So I really, really enjoy working with uh, drum brakes. It's easy enough to do, but they just take a lot more time to to put in than than, than discs do because obviously disc is replaced the disc, slide in a couple of pads and, and slap it on and away you go. Whereas these are set all the springs up and set a, a roller to make sure they're all still adjusted and, and it's yeah, it's a bit more of a pain in the ass. We've got new um, got new brake uh, cylinder as well to go on because a lot of these components are actually pretty cheap, so it's just cheap insurance to throw it on now. And yeah, then we should be done with the braking system we've done the engine stuff and uh, that should be it i don't know if i'm going to bother painting the bed and all that in in um just to get it roadworthy uh might do that when we get back so there'll still be a few little things here and there that we can do when we get back like i'm going to change the diff gears and paint the bed and do some modifications to it and widen the ramps but get this sort of get the roadworthy and then worry about that later next is the fronts now these are a bit different because it's not just a disc and pad change Got to do some stuff with the, some of these suspension joints look a bit gross, but the kingpin, which you won't be able to see, is behind here. Uh, that needs doing too, and that's apparently a bit of a job. So I've got to take that out. Uh, so I'll have to take this whole assembly off, 
and replace the the pads and the discs. If they, all this stuff actually looks pretty good, but I'm just replacing it for the sake of it anyway. Also, want to see if I can run a wheel speed sensor off the back. If there's a stud, I'm sure this this is bolted onto here, so I'm sure there's studs in there or something. So hopefully, I can pick up off the back of one of those studs and run a wheel speed sensor because I don't know how the, the speedo drive seemed to jump around a bit. So I want to actually. Uh, I want an accurate speedo because everyone knows in Victoria that speed kills and uh, if you're 3Ks over the limit, um, you have a fair chance of murdering someone um, and inconveniently also picking up multiple demerit points and uh, large dollars worth of fines. So I want an accurate speedo, um, which I can do if I pick up wheel speed sensor and feed straight into the fuel tech dash. So time to get all this off and uh, have a closer look at what we're looking at here. So this is the kingpin. It goes in here, and then it's retained by that bolt in place there. And um, so this is the hub essentially, and then it goes off to the main arm. Play in there can be from, these are the old, old bushings that it slides into. But once they go, these bushings get slid into here, um, it's a really, really tight fit. They get crushed, so it means you're meant to um, put a reamer through here and read them out to the exact hole. I don't have a reamer in that size. I'm not sure if I really want to buy one because a decent reamer, adjustable reamer even for that's about a hundred or so dollars and if it's one job, if I can get away with just using this, uh, this is just a brake cylinder hone. So I'm going to try and, it's you know self-centering, so if I can get away with just honing these out to the right size, that'll be great because it means I save a hundred dollars um, and it works because it'll be fine. Then to, it gets capped on either end, you pump grease in until the grease comes out on either side and then you set uh, the play in this. So one of the large bushings, this bushing will go here and so the center strut sort of goes there and then you use, there's a couple of shims in here, you use the shims on this side of it to, to take out any play. So you put this in first, you might feel for a little bit of play, back the kingpin back out and then put in one shim, fill it again, put another shim and see how you go. So if you do have leftover shims as well, uh, don't from your old setup, don't throw them out because once these components wear, uh, you may need extra shims. So I think this has got, this looks like it's got about three shims in it. So if you need a fourth shim, because it could possibly wear, because these are wear surfaces. So it's old cast iron, they could have worn down and these are tiny, tiny shims. So never throw those out, but this is basically what comes in the kit. That's the brand new bush brand new bolt so that that's the one that goes through um, that then comes through on a taper and it sort of just locks that in there uh, and then it stops that from moving up and down and then it's just you pump the grease in through these and they cap up the top here you pump the grease in and block it off and um, the grease also uh, takes up any any slack in in this whole setup um, but that's that's what it looks like here so we've got to keep on reaming it there once we're done, we can bolt it back on the car. And hopefully that takes all the play out of the front ends because uh, what I found when we took this off, that there was no shims up the top. So there was a little bit of play in the front end and there was no shim up the top, which is uh, quite unusual. So whoever did them last um, either did it wrong or there was no play at that point in time and now there is. So keep on keeping on with this and hopefully get it back in the car soon. So this is our front setup, the double I-beam. This is a sort of like your steering arm. And yeah, our hub goes right here. So as you can see there, those two surfaces and the kingpin, which is this dirty beast, you can see it's very rusted, slides all the way through, through here. But yeah, these are the old bearings. You can see the amount of dirt and junk that's um, compiled here because these old systems being covered with grease, the grease naturally comes out of this and then just, well, the, a lot of the components are covered in that grease. We've got 
these pads here, um, which have seen better days. So we've got new, they've got a lot of meat on them, but there's a bit of rust on the back and stuff. So who knows if rust, this, this is normally just bonded by um, a bonding agent. So, you know, that, that could collapse or whatever. So we'll sort those out. And under the other side, uh, we've got our new disc. That is mint, that bush. That's perfect. That's ready to go another 100,000 Ks at least. Um, it still works. So don't see what your problem is. Look who's turned up. Hi, important things that it lives two minutes away, turns up an hour late, just <laughs> every every app. True. That's alright. He's nice got shirt. nothing to do. Brand new. Long sleeve. Bit of a navy. plug, straight off the straight off the press. Straight out of the box. What colour is that? That's navy, long sleeve, traditional tea. Looks alright. So this is how the brake system works on the F truck. It's a multiple part system. So you've got this setup that that bolts to the, to that um, kingpin upright, um, even says which way's up, and then the the brakes slide in on this sliding sort of thing, and a pin holds them in place. They're a bit bizarre. Um, your hub is separate to the disc, so the hub then bolts onto um, the the upright, and then the disc bolts to um, to the hub, so quite a lot of moving pieces, but um, it's very heavy duty compared to what you'd normally see in a normal passenger car or whatever. So this is uh, one of the grossest jobs, uh, but also necessary. So what we have here is components of a grease gun. We have grease. Different countries have different uh, grease tubes in that, so make sure if you're buying uh, a grease gun that it takes the right tube for the country you're in. So in Australia, we most of the tubes are all 450 grams. And you see that there. This tube it has a ring pull. Um, this is a plastic one. Others may have metal ones or whatever. And oh, this cap, which I jammed on, so it wouldn't come loose in the car. So what we need to do is undo this cap. Inside there, you can now see the grease. So we'll do first is get the grease gun, and we need to pull this all the way back should lock in place. Yes, it has. What we do now is we take our open end and we just feed it in. Uh, once it's fed in, you can see it's basically in the whole way. What I'm gonna do now is this ring pull and open it. And now what you'll see again is, we've got grease there. So, so screw it all the way till it's just finger tight and then back it off maybe two turns because what we want to do now is bleed some of the air out of here. So what we're going to do now is release the plunger. I'm just going to push down. And that should release all the air out of the system. And now it's just a case of sealing it up. And we're just going to pump it. There we go. So we're all done. So that's it. And that's how easy it is. So you'll be able to now grease CV boots, things like the kingpins that are about to do on the F350, bearings, bushes, things like that. So wheel bearings you still have to do in your, your stand away, but other bearings and bushes and things like that you can do. So they're very cheap and inexpensive to buy and grease and to maintain your vehicle. So if you've got marine stuff and trailers and that, uh, that is how you do it. sneak peek into the master cylinder the other day this is the new one because that other one was totally finished but as you can expect sometimes with really old parts and old cars uh, this brake line fitting is uh, is too big for that no bueno so uh, I'm instead of trying to find an adapter I'm just going to cut this off here cut that off there and then slip that on there and reflare it so we'll do that and then that'll screw into here, like so, and then we will be done. So what we want to do now is get this end looking the same as, as this end here. So to do that, what we need to do is put a flare in it. So it's not just a normal type of flare from, you know, a plumbing kit. Um, it's, it's a brake, so it's sort of a double flare. So it uses this little die, and then we use 
this setup here. So this is just your basic uh, brake flaring setup. So what we'll do is this will sit up in here. Uh, and then we just snug this down uh, depending on, on how much we want. So the next step is to set the line in here with the concave part as is facing up. Uh, to get the height here, I just drop this in to the next one across and I just want to level it up so they're at the same height, which they are now. And now put that in there. It's a case of just tightening this down. Should basically be that if we undo it. What that'll end up giving us is that reverse flare. So uh, that's what we've got now. You can see there. All right, line on. Tested the brakes. No leaks. Fantastic. Uh, now next is time to bleed the braking system. So you just come over here. You'll see. I just wanted to pump the pedal first to make sure everything worked and your brake fluid is not meant to be that color so that is wretched so what we're going to use is this which is a vacuum assist uh brake leader kit which means i can do it here easily just at the back by just pulling a trigger so we'll do that now and uh see what comes out all right so that's the junk that come out of it and that is mud. Brake fluid should never, ever, ever look like that. All right, so that'll about do us for Backyard Mechanics for this episode. Thanks for joining us. We've got the brake stuff out of the way. That's great. But now we need to really pay our attention to load carrying on this. It is a tow truck after all. So with those load level of springs missing from this bed, um, we really need to do something in the rear end. And we're going to tackle that on the next episode when we install some uh, airbag helper springs. Until then, I'll catch you later. And like always, Support the people who support us.